Guitar practice session 10 1, 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I feel I need to be working on, then give a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help me to generate a routine, be able to verbalize what I'm trying to be working on, which might get it in my brain a little bit better, possibly provide information to others that are practicing similar things, possibly providing for feedback if anybody sees an easier way to do the things that I am trying to do and get in my mind. The worksheet might be a little bit different than the layout you've seen elsewhere in that I'm gonna to try to get everything lined up the same way so that you can see things and possibly take it in just from a shape's perspective as easy as possible. Therefore, from our perspective behind the guitar, we've got the low string on top, thinking about it top to bottom, left to right, our worksheet structured the same way as though we imprinted the strings onto the page here. Low string on top, top to bottom, left to right as your perspective from behind the guitar. I'll even flip my guitar around on the screen when playing so it looks like I'm left-handed, but kind of looking like your perspective, the fretboard going once again the same way. I'll try to line it up to the point that we are actually going to be working on, which is what I'm going to be calling position uh, number four. You might call it a C-shaped position. If you're looking from a caged position, we're going to be looking at the uh, mode number four, Lydian mode. Remembering that I'm giving absolute mode numbers based on the Ionian scale or major scale, which we'll talk about more later. Hopefully, uh, give some idea of why I think that is a useful thing to do. We're also going to be trying to bounce around a little bit more as I go through like pretty much like an hour practice session or so. I'm trying to break it up into smaller components, possibly making it easier for me to retain it. And maybe that's a good practice for others as well. So that's the idea. So I'm going to be looking at these other worksheets as I go through the practice problem. So first I start off by looking at this shape which is breaking the fretboard into five distinct shapes, which are gonna be four to five frets wide, which is perfect because you have this nice column and that allows us to build chords easily within the columns with multiple strings involved because we can reach the strings that are all in one to five frets. However, there are benefits as well to what's known as the three note per string shape. I'm going to call it the three columns shape over here. Uh, and that means we're going to reach up a little bit further sometimes uh, to reach up to the third note, which has us drifting up the neck a little bit. That makes it a little bit more difficult for us to make more complex chords because it's going to be harder for us to grab intervals from here to here than like from here to here or from here to here. However, it when we're just kind of like playing like lead, I guess you might call it, uh, it's going to be easier for us to grab more notes in one particular place if we're reaching up a little bit higher on the neck. And I'm also going to be looking to areas where I think it's more useful to play one way versus the other way. And I also want to reconcile in my mind the shapes that we're learning, which I'm breaking down each of, of, the, of the larger shapes into smaller shapes using what I call a house analogy and then the hamburger barbell analogy, which is the pentatonic shapes, and say, well, how does that feed into this three note per string shape? We're going to have the same shapes. The shapes are still the same on the guitar. So what? So how can I make, have my mind be able to switch back and forth to say, hey, look, these are just two different ways to see the same thing uh, on this guitar and play the same intervals with a slightly different adjustment. So I'll look at, in particular, this, this house analogy and say, how does that fit into this three note per string shape? And what are the pros and cons? And then we'll also, at some point, go to what I'm calling the one-stop shape, or this is where I practice the complement uh, modes. So instead of looking at all the related modes around the same key. Now let's use the pivot point of one note, in this case, the A, and play all of the different modes around that note, which is the other common way that we would be using this in application in a song, going from one mode to the other, pivoting around uh, that central note. And that also helps us to understand all the different shapes of the different modes as we do them in one place, changing the intervals necessary so we can build 
any of our shapes off of wherever we are at by basically just looking at you know the intervals learning them from one spot so we'll kind of bounce back and forth between that stuff and then of course we'll look at the lydian on shape number four which is over here where it repeats on the 12th it's also the open shape and we'll count up and back uh, on our fretboard to look at the intervals over here so we'll count our intervals up and back to learn the interval shapes trying to integrate them into the further breakout of the shapes within inside this shape number four which i call the seven note house analogy and the pentatonic hamburger barbell analogy which is kind of a lot of things to take in at one time so i kind of get a little confused and wonky but i think i'm actually getting better at it to try to learn as many different perspectives of looking at it within my hour training session uh, that I have uh, as much as I can, try to pack as much in there as I can. So we'll go up and back between uh, the first octave and this shape on our intervals. And we'll also take a look at the related modes and where they live as we go up and back. Then at the end, I'm gonna basically kind of mess around in uh, the Lydian, I'm in Lydian, I hope I didn't say Phrygian, Phrygian was last time. And I've mapped out all of the different combinations starting with the one, in this case, it's gonna be the one of the mode that we are in. And then I only have three notes, so I'm gonna build chords based on this. So we have to know on which position the, that we're in, how to convert that into at least a major or minor chord and possibly beyond that, thinking about the seven, nine, 11, 13 uh, intervals, if we wanted to. And I'm just gonna go through here and just pretend I'm making a song or just make different progressions and play them in one spot versus different places on the neck. And the idea here is that I'm trying to restrict myself to say, instead of just saying, oh, I just I could play any of these chords, I'm just gonna pick three chords that are in the mode I'm in, work on converting the these relative positions to actual chords, minor or major chord at the least, as well as more complex chords, possibly adding again, the seven, the nine, whatever, and, and then playing them in different places on the neck, remembering that I feel like having too many options is usually what limits people. So if I can actually use my worksheet to say, I'm gonna break it down and I'm just gonna work on this thing, then that allows me to be creative with just three chord progressions and try to play them in different areas, different tempos, arpeggiate them, play them inversions and all that kind of stuff uh, to just kind of tinker with it. Uh, and so that's what we will do at the end. Continuing on with what I would call shape number four, looking at the mode number four, that being the Lydian mode. Now, as we work through the Lydian mode, I'm also gonna be bouncing back and forth to what I would call the three note per string, or I might call it the three pillars uh, scale shapes hoping that I can basically reconcile in my mind the differences between the two and be able to see that these are just two different ways to be playing the scales on the guitar, possibly also finding insights in terms of which approach to playing the scales would be best depending on what I am trying to do. So you can see here, we've been working on these shapes, which are basically breaking the guitar neck into four to five fret intervals where within the four to five fret interval column, we have all the notes that we need. That is a great way to, to break out the information because it's easy to build like chords and whatnot if you're in that same spot. We can also use what I, I would call the three note per string. It's commonly called that. I'm gonna start calling it the three pillars. I'm gonna to try to make up names for them to stick it in my mind. And so we'll see if that sticks. But you'll see here that what happens when we use this shape is that we travel up the neck. So one of the downsides is we're not just in one nice four to five fret position, which makes it a little bit more difficult to play like chords, for example. But on the plus side, it's all symmetrical that we have three notes uh, per string. And we also can basically start on like each of the modes are gonna start where you would expect uh, at the top of the mode. So what we want to do is basically as I go through this is recognize the different shapes. Now notice that I call this a three note per string shape. You might say, Hey, look, most of the time when I'm over here, I'm playing three, I'm playing three notes per string. Here's three notes per string, three notes per string. Oh, wait a sec. And then here's three notes per string. But then here we've got a two note per string. 
So the rule for the, 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 when we break the guitar into four to five chunks, four to five fret chunks, is that we never extend one, two, three, four, five fret distance, right? We never extend, we never go between five frets on one reach. We could have a shape that extends between five frets, but we never go five frets out, which means we never have something that's gonna be a whole step, whole step. It's always gonna be a whole step, half step, or a half step, whole step. So we never have that bit larger reach on the pinky, which is totally doable, but that's what pulls us back into the shape over here instead of making us drift to the right. So that's, so, so you, one way we can kind of view our shapes over here is to say, how can I go from a three note per, per string shape or how can I go from my normal shapes, the five, pen, five kind of like pentatonic shapes to the three note per string shapes, pentatonic, except that I'm playing all seven notes, but in that five, uh, five position breakout, which people often think of as like the pentatonic. <laughs> so how could I change that? Well, one way that you can change it is you could just say, whenever I hit a point where I'm only playing two strings, I'm going to reach up further and that's going to force you to drift up the guitar. Now, one thing to note is this three note per string often is most apparent when we look at the major scale, because when I look at the major scale, you will, you will see that the first, we start off on this three note kind of uh, thing here. And it's important on the major scale because if I, if, I, if I reach up to here, that's where my third is. So that third uh, is quite useful to be able to reach to. So when I, when I play the, like a major key, then it's useful for me to switch back and forth between this three note per string and the position that I'm in, which would be you know this position two, uh, in my is what I typically would call it or from the cage system an E major shaped position because that allows me to reach up to the third here as well as go back here and reach the third back here if I if I wanted it so so that's what I'll start to look at this uh, position in and so let's first analyze it over here now I'm gonna I'm gonna break down this these shapes into their smaller shapes you'll recognize we have the box double stop and the double stop box here so it's this one that's funny, and you'll recognize that what's really funny about it is we're starting in the middle of the box. So in this case, we're starting in the middle of the box, and then down here, we're starting where we normally would start in the top right of the box for a major scale. So, so that, that's the kind of thing I kind of want to be able to, to recognize, and then I can basically see, oh yeah, this is the same thing, except I'm, I'm reaching up, and, and that's shifting my shape up. All right, so let's first analyze it over here and look at look at basically this shape because that's the one we're on which is shape number four so we're in the lydian mode i'm going to call it mode number four because i'm taking the mode numberings from the major scale so if ionian or major scale is mode number one the fourth of that would be the lydian and the one, four, five notes are major chords in a major scale. Therefore, I know the Lydian is a major mode indicated by the capital Roman numeral. So we're in the Lydian mode. Here's the relative positions in the Lydian mode. Here's the notes for those positions in the Lydian mode. And then here's gonna be the, the uh, uh, actual modes related to them with the numbering system based on the major mode which makes it easier for us to determine if it's gonna be a major chord or a minor chord that we create. All right, and so then if I, if I go over here, we can say, all right, then, then where are my roots on this shape? I've got a root up here. So this is in, this is within the, uh, the I'm in the box. So you can see the box right here. So if I look at my house analogy then uh this is c's house and it's a major house right so i'm going to say and c's looking towards the ocean in the penthouse up here and underneath it is the other major that being the lydian it's on the ground floor still looking basically towards the penthouse now if i if i take this box i mean this double stop box shape and i want to convert it from a seven note shape to the five note pentatonic shape then the Lydian is usually the one that I would remove. I would only play the outer notes here, here, and then here, here. 
obviously when we're in the key of Lydian, we would have to we wouldn't remove it because that's the key that we're in typically if we're playing in Lydian. So that's going to be uh, where it is located. If I'm at the if I look at the shape in terms of the I'm going to copy this over here, copy and paste it. Da -da. If I look at the shape in terms of a five note pentatonic shape, then then up here in the barbell, this is what I would call the barbell of the five note uh, pentatonic shape. We usually only play the outsides of the barbell part of the shape if it was a five note, but obviously if we're in the key of the Lydian, we would have to add the, the F in this case, which would be the Lydian mode, which would be in the inside or handle of the barbell. And then on the hamburger shape, it would be off to the right of the hamburger. So here's our normal hamburger shape that doesn't have the kink and the tuning. It would be off to the right as though you put a bill on the hamburger, like a hat, a baseball cap. And now you've got to add that bit to the, to the right. And then that means that you would have to add this one to the left, which would be the Locrian so that you have a hamburger with like a Z shape on it, the top bun stretching to the right bottom bun stretching uh, to the left. So, so if I take those standard shapes, now I'm going to start, let's think of these shapes inside here as the double stop box shape, and then uh, the box double stop shape, and then the two note per string shape. So if I convert this to a to a three note per string uh, scale, I'm still going to see this shape. I'm still going to see the double stop box shape, and I'm still going to see the box double stop shape. But I'm not going to see the two note per string flat shape because if I'm doing three notes per string, I'm going to extend that out to to the next note, right? So I so because I'm going to have three notes per string. So what does that do? Let me go over here. Now I know I'm going to be playing this time and what I would call this orange is what I would call position number two, which you might call an E major position. And then the next position up, which would of course be position number three uh, position, which you might call a D uh, position for the caged system and now I'm looking at now I'm in the key of C because that's the one I'm going to concentrate on first when I start to analyze this but I'll see the same shapes so where does it start like where does this position start notice it's starting as we would expect in the box it's within the box but for this shape we're not thinking of this shape as including this B before it we're going to start the shape in the middle of the box right so now we're going to so instead of saying instead of including like this side of the box, I'm starting over here and then I'm going to say one, two. Now, if this was position number two, then, then to get to the third, I would not be going out here, but rather going back here. Notice that both those are valid. So I'd like to see this shape at the same time, position number two and this three note position, because if I'm playing in, in a major, I'd like to be able to reach up here to the third because that's more convenient when I'm like jamming than to reach down here to the third, which is kind of, I have to shift my fingers to go down there, whereas here I can do the hammer on. So I'd like to see both, the, the, the benefit of having my hand over here in, in, in the normal position number two is I get the whole scale. So now I can, I can, I can play my E shaped, uh, I can play my, my E shaped boom, boom, boom bar chord all in one place you can see if this bar chord here doesn't fit in the three note per string shape because we're drifting up so so when i'm trying to play like chords in one place it's better it's oftentimes better to do what to do the five the five different positions that are all in the same column of one to five frets because then i can find all the different intervals i need within my four to five fret fingering position. However, if I want to track, if I want to play fast, for example, then especially when I'm on this major and I want to get that third, I can reach further up and I can do more lead, I guess, lead stuff, right? Then, then if I was keeping to this position. So that's why in the, in the major, I think uh, it, it, in particular, it's quite useful to think about reaching up to that third 
up there. So if I so if I did that, then I reach up to the third. Well, that means I don't have to go back to this third because I've already played it. So that means that I've cut off the whole left side of the of the of the box, and I'm only playing the right side of the box. And then on the on the next shape underneath it, we go F G. Now, if I was still in the other position, I would have played these three notes, and then I would have gone back to A over here. But now I'm not going to go back to A because now my fin because I, I'm not playing a double stop. It, it would be the hamburger double stop, but I'm not playing that because now I'm I'm on the inside of I'm not the hamburger the the house double stop. I'm on the inside of the house. Therefore, I'm going to reach up to to the third uh, note again. So if I do that, then of course I don't have to go back to this A because I'd be repeating the A. So therefore, I'm going to reach up to the next one, and that's why this this shifts up. So we're actually in the middle. This is the middle of the three pillars shape, what I'm calling the three pillars shape, because you can see as we repeat this shape, as you can see when we get over here to, to G, it actually has three pillars or, or three strings. There's a three string shape, do, 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 that has these three pillars. So I'm going to call that the three pillar shape. And when you're playing a major scale in terms of the three pillar shape we're starting in the middle pillar the middle pillar of right so so here's the three pillars we're starting in the middle pillar uh of of the shape right and so then we're going to go down here and and now once we're under the the last pillar of the shape then we shift up there's a natural shift up that we have to go up that's not because there's a kink in the tuning that's going to be a natural shift up after the three pillars and now you can see that we're in once again this box the how the house shape but now we're playing it like normal we're not playing just the right side of the house we're playing the left side and then going to the right side and that would end off our scale so but the scale here is going to be the middle pillar cutting the box in half and going do 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 and then we're going to the whole box here so I can get that leading tone back to the C. Now what's interesting here is that if I keep going, you'll you'll note you'll note what happens is is the C now is not the first note in the three note per string shape. It's now the second note. So now if I keep going, I'm really playing the as though it was the second note. That would be kind of like so now I'm playing something that is actually similar to position number two if I was on the top fret. In other words, if I was playing this position, position number two, what would I do? I would start on the second note and I'd go boom, boom, and then I'd go back to this E, boom, 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 and then boom, boom, boom. That's kind of what's happening here because now I'm naturally left off on the second note. So now I'm going from the second note to To here and I'm not playing like three notes per string from there I'm playing three notes from string from here that means I'm going back just like I would if this was you know position number two or the E major shape position on the top string boom 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 and then we go to the G and then it shifts up to here boom 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 so that's kind of an interesting relationship notice that I could go down to this C right here and then think of it as my root and start playing the three notes per string from here, which means I'm gonna cut off these two notes again and just play it from here, which means I'm gonna go boom, 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 three notes out, boom, boom, boom. And now I play the second and third strings of the th of the three pillars. And then and then I go to the to the B. Notice the B has shifted up two frets because now it's ha it naturally shifted up and we had the kink in the tuning or the fault line. So now it's up here and boom, boom, boom. So that's just a quick uh, recap of, of this one. So if I played you know, this one out, it would be the pillar one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're moving up. Uh, so I, I left off one, two, three, four, five, six on uh, this A. And then now we have the, the house seven, eight. So that leads me into the, to the basically the house oh man i'm i'm going back and forth too much
So let's just try that again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oops, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then, so let's kind of compare. I'm going to try to go back to this shape. I'm going to try to keep those in mind a little bit as we just do our normal uh, shapes over over here. And normally when I play this shape, I usually just kind of think about that top bit, and then I go back into my my normal shape. But but I'd like to be able to kind of extend that up more than that. When I look at the mi when you look at the minor, by the way, it doesn't become as much of an issue that three note per string, which is what I tend to play more. That's just what I learned more because if I'm looking at if I'm looking at the minor, if I started from the minor over here, then I would be starting on what would be naturally three notes per string, and that would be just the normal shape, right? I'd have the 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 three note per string wouldn't change, right? Because now I've got three notes, da da da, the three notes per string, da da da, and then where you have the two notes per string, here's where it gets wonky. So now I've got the the G to the A, but if I was doing three notes per string. I wouldn't go from here back to here. I'd go up up to here, right? So so it's still important on the minors, but it doesn't really take kind of effect. Whereas if you're looking at the major, it becomes really important. Oftentimes, if you're just jamming around because you want to grab that that third, becomes important. Right? So anyway, so now let's go back and do our normal thing. So I'm gonna go, so now I'm gonna start on the, the, so I'm on the Lydian. Okay, so notice that this shape, the question is also this shape is called what I would call position number four. And, uh, and the position number four could also be called a C shape because, because if I looked at the related major scale, it would be Ionian, that would be a C. And if I built a C, it would be like that, which I could see in open position and finger a little bit better, which is also position number four. And I could also call this shape the Lydian shape, but notice the problem here, there's only five shapes and there are uh, seven, uh, there are seven modes. So, so this shape could either be the Phrygian shape if I started on the first one because you have that distinctive minor second, or it could be the Phrygian shape if I start on the third on the second note. So I'm starting to call it the second note Phrygian shape, or the first I'm sorry the second note Lydian shape, or the first note Phrygian shape. You have the same problem with what I would call shape number two, although it's not as distinct because that would be our major shape. Which I, which you could call, which, which I could call, you know, the E shape if it was a was a, from the caged system, or I could I could call it just the major shape, because if I that's usually the shape people think of if they're going to play a major scale. But the major shape actually starts on the second note in the shape. If you're looking at all seven notes, the first shape would be the Locrian shape, but because no one really plays in Locrian usually. That's not usually a problem, but I could still call it the Locrian shape, right? Because it starts here or the second note major shape. Uh, it might be the two ways to kind of distinguish that in my mind as I'm trying to get those two things straight. All right, so now let's go, let's go uh, through this and do our normal thing. So I'm gonna copy this here and do our intervals. So with the Lydian, we have a we have a a uh, major shape, so I can compare it to the major uh, scale. It has only one interval difference, which is misnamed here because the way my worksheet is, and you can name the 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 interval two different ways. And what we and you can see it's off because I need I go from the one the first the second the third I need a fourth I don't need a fifth. So I could call it a flat fifth, that's what I would normally call it, but because I need a fourth here, I can call it an augmented fourth. So I'm not gonna try to correct the worksheet right now, I'm gonna just say, okay, I can see that that should be a six note away augmented fourth instead of calling it a six note away 
flat fifth. Hopefully that doesn't throw anybody off too much. The, the Lydian is possibly the least used, in my mind, mode. Maybe that's not for everyone, but for me, it's probably one of the more difficult modes to make sound correct because I start. it starts to sound more like a minor or major when I try to play in it, which we might get to if I ever get there uh, to the end here. But uh, it's actually kind of easy to remember the interval that's different because if you memorize that it's absolute mode number four, it's actually the fourth inter it's actually the fourth of the mode which has the funny interval and uh, the funny interval happens to be the Locrian interval, which you would expect to be the funny one, right? So that all kind of makes it maybe a little bit easier to remember if, if you remember any of that. So in any case, if we go, let's count this up then. We're going to say do, 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 and go to the second here. All right. All right. So the second of mode number four, Lydian, is a two note away major second. And the inverse then is going to be 12 minus two, which is a 10 note away minor seven. So if I see that shape, obviously, do, do, two note away major second going from G back to F, therefore 10 note away uh, minor seven. And then if I go to, and then I also, I can say the second of mode number four Lydian, if I know that Lydian is the fourth of the relative major mode, otherwise known as Ionian, Ionian is the first, Lydian is the fourth of it, the one, four, five are major, and that means it's actually three notes away, meaning if I start on, on like the first of the Ionian, I go to the second, two, three, four, meaning I go up three steps. So therefore, I, my formula would be the fourth mode, Lydian, minus one is three, plus the second that I'm on, two, gives me five. So we're on mode number five. Mode number five is the mixed Lydian. We know that the fifth mode of the major scale would make a major chord because the one, four, five of the major scale are the major chords. And beyond that, it's the mixed Lydian mode, which also tells me that it has a distinctive minor seventh on it if I wanted to build a chord more complex than three notes that's still in the key that I'm working on. Okay, and where does the Mixolydian live? Well, in our analogies, in the seven note house analogy, uh, it, is, it is not in the house, even though this house is the major house, because it has the flat seven, hangs out with the minors, and therefore uh, it's over here in uh, in the two note per string, it's on the bottom of the two note per string, which is that one, and it's in the it's in the flat. And in the hamburger uh, barbell pentatonic analogy, the the uh, <laughs> the mixolydian is in the meat of the hamburger here, and then it's in the uh, right side of the barbell. So here's the barbell. It's on the right side of the barbell on the top. Okay, let's go to the next one. We're gonna go to the third. Do, do, do. So now we're gonna go to the third uh, of the Lydian, which is gonna be the third because it's a major mode. It's a four note away major third. How do I know that? Because I can count it up and say, this is gonna be five down here and then four, four note away major third. And the inverse, therefore, is 12 minus 4, which is 8, 8 note away, which would be a minor 6. So when I see this shape, I'm always thinking, oh, that's a major third, that shit, unless it's over the fault line. And therefore, the inverse is an 8 note away uh, uh, minor 6. Hopefully I said that right. Minor 6 uh, on that. All right. And then I'm going to go, and I know that the third of Lydian is... Mode number four minus one is three plus three is six. That gives me mode number six, or I can say the sixth of the major key I know is, an, is a minor. Therefore, I'd play a minor on the third of the Lydian. I would play a minor chord because it's equivalent to the sixth of the major. And I know that the two, three, and six are minor chords uh, relative to the major. Beyond that, I can see it's the main major. It's the, I mean, it's the main minor. <laughs> it's the minor mode. Hopefully, 
I'm getting a little, a little, little. I'm wrapping myself in knots here, but there it is. So we're gonna, so we're gonna say, okay, let's go to the next one. Well, where does it live? <laughs> it's not in the house for the house analogy. Uh, it's in the the double stop side because it's a minor, it's a minor mode. The only minor mode living in the house is the Phrygian, which lives in the basement. In terms of the hamburger, uh, in terms of of the hamburger barbell analogy, it's in the bottom left of the barbell where it's on the weights of the barbell are the two heaviest minor modes which on the bottom the main minor and then on the top is the phrygian all right let's go to the next one we're going to go to the fourth which is going to be boom boom all right the fourth of mode number four lydian mode number four lydian has a funny fourth uh which is going to be then the the weird interval which is is a uh six note away and it says diminished fifth but we're going to call it an augmented fourth so whenever i see like this shape i'm thinking oh there's going to be tension there it looks like a fifth would be up here but it's back here to the augmented fourth the fourth is normally back here it's been shifted up to the augment means shifted up okay uh so uh, how do I know that? Because I can count down, that would be five here and then six. The difference, 12 minus six, is also six. So whether I play it from top to bottom or bottom to top, it's gonna be a flat fifth, otherwise known as an augmented fourth, <clears throat> two, na two names for the same thing. Top to bottom, flat, fi uh, flat fifth or augmented fourth in our case, bottom to top, flat fifth or augmented fourth, going the other way. You're at the middle, if you think of it as a circle, you're like in the middle, you know, you're right on either side of the circle. You're as far away as you can get on the circle, but then you're just gonna go right back together again. So now we're on, uh, oh, wait a sec. That we also say that the fourth of mode number four Lydian is four minus one, which is three plus four is seven. Therefore, <clears throat> the fourth of the Lydian is the seventh of the major scale and we know the seventh of the major scale is that funny diminished one, right? It's called the Locrian mode. And therefore, if I played it, I'd have that the flat, you know, the flat, if I wanted to make a chord off it, it would have a minor third and that flat fifth, uh, which is the weird one. Where does the Locrian live? Well, it's in the major house here, but it's in the back by the basement up top. It's also the one that we would remove if I go from the house analogy down to a five note pentatonic. We would remove the B, we would remove the F, right? In terms of the, of the, of the hamburger barbell analogy, then it's, it's in the inside of the barbell. So here's the barbell and it's in the inside where the hands would go on the barbell, which you would not play if you're playing five note pentatonic and would have to add if you're converting from five notes to seven notes uh, to get the full seven note scale. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Ultra vase. We're going to uh, the fifth of the fifth is going to be a normal uh, seven note away perfect fifth. So seven note away <clears throat> perfect fifth for mode number four Lydian. How do I know that? Because I can count up that would be five, six, seven, and inverse 12 minus seven would be four, four note away, minor third. So if I see that shape, I'm thinking, oh, that's a power chord. And then you go, whenever you, whenever you see a power chord. And then, uh, and that would be a seven note away, perfect fifth. And therefore the inverse would be a five note away, uh, perfect fourth. So the fifth of mode number four Lydian is four minus one, which is three plus five, five, six, seven, eight, only seven modes. Eight minus seven is one given me mode number one. Obviously, if it was mode number one of a major key, it would be part of the one, four, five. It'd be a major chord. Therefore, the fifth of the Lydian is equivalent to the one of the major, and therefore I would play a major chord on it. Beyond that, it's the main major. It's the, it's the, it's the major scale. <clears throat> All right, where does it live? It's in the house analogy, of course. It's in the penthouse of a house looking towards the ocean in the hamburger barbell analogy that's on the right side the weights of the barbell for the majors are on the right the heavy hitters the major and the mixolydian and you're like what 
and 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 the the one that's left out, Lydian, of course, because it's it's not in it's not of the two heavy hitters. All right, so let's go to the next one. Let's go to the sixth of the Lydian. Sixth of the Lydian is going to be doot doot. Sixth of the <coughs> of the Lydian is a nine note away major six. How do I know? Because if I count that up, that would be five, ten, nine. And what's the inverse? Twelve minus nine which is uh, three, would be a three note away minor third. The inverse of a major is a minor. So if I see this shape, I'm like, oh yeah. <clears throat> Unless that's going over the fault line, that's a nine note away minor six. And therefore the inverse, bottom to top, is a three note away. So this was not, did I say minor? I said major. Five, a nine note away major six. And therefore the inverse is a three note away minor third. All right. So sometimes I get a little tongue tied here. So we're gonna say, and then the sixth of mode number four, Lydian is four minus one, which is three plus six, six, seven, eight, nine. There's only seven modes. Nine minus seven is two. That gives us the Dorian. So if I know it's the second of the relative major, then I know I play a minor triad because the two, three, six of the major are minor chords. Beyond that, I know it's the Dorian mode. <clears throat> so when I go beyond, like, just uh, the two, three, six, I, I can then create the rest of the modes based on the fact that it's the Dorian. Where does the Dorian live? Well, it's not in the house because it's a minor mode, and the only minor that lives in the house in the seven-note analogy is the Phrygian in the basement. So it's basically hanging over here in the double stop part of the double stop house analogy in terms of the pentatonic analogy where we have the barbell hamburger shape it actually encompasses the entire hamburger it's the top left bun which you can see more easily over here without the kink in the tuning top left bun of the hamburger bottom right bun of the hamburger all right let's go to the next one the seventh so we're going to go okay this is going to be the seventh of <clears throat> mode number four Lydian is going to be a 11 note away major seven back to the norm for the major 11 note away major seven how do I know because I can count up 5 10 11 inverse 12 minus 11 is one therefore it would be a one note away minor second so if I see that shape I'm like oh yeah that's an 11 note away major seven the inverse therefore one note away uh minor second and that brings us back then to the octave whoo all right <clears throat> let's go back the other way but let's do a joke first got to break things up here a bit got to break things up let me get some coffee <clears throat> all right <clears throat> i don't know about you but i but i expend i experience a lot of counterintuitiveness in my life. There's a lot of counterintuitiveness going on. For example, this morning, my counter was holding a dozen donuts on it. And it's like, how did my counter know that I couldn't resist those donuts? How did the counter know that? Because it's counterintuitive. You see, my counter's counterintuitive. It knew that, it, so that, and that's one intuitive counter, you know. It's, it's a cruel, enticing counter, but an intuitive counter. Uh, uh, I, th I think it's a cruel counter because why, why is my counter cruel, you might ask? Why, does it ha why do counters have to be so cruel and put donuts on them? Uh, because, because that's the way counter culture is, you know? That's just the way counter culture is. It's cruel like that. They always, they always pick on people. And so, so you... you you just wait counter until I gain 300 donut induced pounds resulting in me due to fatigue while eating donuts sit on you counter, sacrificing the counter legs given out as I, as I dive across you attempting to save the donuts that are sliding off of you counter. Honestly, I think I'd be better off without, without enabling, without, without that enabling counter. My counter is enabling, it's an enabling counter be better anyway I don't know if that was counter culture my counter is cruel because it's part of counter culture man counter culture is always cruel okay we get it let's go back to the next one all right before I go back the other way 
let's just see what we've looked at here and just once again look at it in terms of the three note scale but this time I'm, I'm applying it to the C over here so if I was on uh, the key of C then then once again I have this shape uh, which is taking the inside of the of the square so where does the C three note per string which I'm gonna call the three pillars shape start it starts on the right side of the box just like it would before except that we're gonna completely cut out the left side of the box when we start the shape so it goes boom 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 and then we're gonna go into the box on the second box and we're gonna include the left side of the box and end it off in the same on the right side of the box so if I continue on with the shape then now I'm basically starting I'm, I'm kind of like another way to look at this is I'm kind of looking at it now like if I was starting on the this note that would be the Locrian shape so it's kind of like I'm playing the Locrian shape except playing the second note as though it's my root and that and right because I'm kind of starting here or you can think of it as I'm basically playing if I start from here shape number two as though that was the top like I would in my normal position number two, right? So now I'm going like dun, 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 bottom of the box now. Now I'm at the bottom of the box. And then and then that's gonna shift up because of the kink in the tuning to the double stop box shape. And then that once again ends off uh, right here at our our top bit. So if I might try later to kind of look at my intervals going through this shape. And I think what we'll find uh, is that it's going to be a little bit more wonky to get to the interval sometimes because like I'm going to have to reach a little further, right? So if I wanted to get like to, to this, uh, to the A here, which would be the sixth, I'd be reaching, I'd be reaching out here, boom, which is a little bit more wonky than reaching over here. I could do it, but notice that that as if if I if I reach over here, if I reached over here, with I can't do much else, right? <laughs> There's not like I'm only gonna. That's all I'm gonna play. You know, it's gonna be unless I, I could try to get a finger down here, maybe. But that stretchier shape is gonna limit me to, to to playing less strings, most likely. So when I'm trying to get to more complex like chords, that could be interesting with more interesting chords. As I do the as I do the intervals that are stretching out here more, but possibly make it a little bit more difficult to include more strings, as it would if I was playing in like this vertical position where I can possibly reach more stuff on on this shape. So maybe we'll, we'll do that later. But this time I want to go back to this one, where now I'm trying to say, let's look at the modes that are complementary modes, and I'm going to do it in the key of A again. So if I'm in the key of A then this time I want to go from like playing this is this is what I would call position number two with a and a major and then switch that maybe to the Dorian which is what I would call uh, position number three you might call it a D shape position you might call this an E shape position for a caged position and that way I'm trying to pivot around the fact that the A is the same but be able to play all the different modes you know, from the same place, shifting through the modes, circling through the modes, so. Oops, what am I doing? I was over here, I'm on the A. So that would be the major. And then if I went to like the Dorian, what would the Dorian look like? I'm still gonna keep, I'm pivoting around the A but the Dorian is going to be what I would call position number three. Versus this. I could reach up to, this is the major, so I could reach up to that for my third. that to the minor minor mode of the Dorian 
which has my third here. To the major again. I can go from the Dorian to the Phrygian. So here's the Dorian. These are two minor modes. So there's the Dorian. And then the Phrygian has that second. So Phrygian. So two minor modes. Maybe I can, like if I was noodling around, they both have A in it. So, I, so if I go in a song from one to the other, pivoting around the A, it might not be too harsh on the ear, right? I could kind of do that maybe. So there's the Dorian and then the Phrygian. I might then all of a sudden be like... Phrygian to the Lydian and so on or maybe let's do like the Mixolydian to uh, the minor or the minor to the Mixolydian so Mixolydian is a major mode which has that bluesy seven in it so we go whoops See, I keep on wanting to go back to the major Minor. 
that to the Mixolydian. between the switches especially between these two because that's kind of what blues the bluesy thing kind of blurs the lines between like the third here of the major and the third of the minor Let's go back to this one and let's go back the other way. So now we're just going to be on. The seven. Uh, let's go from. So we're back to Lydian. Uh, the Lydian and we're on do, 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 here. So we're on the F and then. So now I'm going to go back to the seven. OK. So now the seventh of the Lydian is uh, a seven, 11 note away major seven. How do I know that? Because if I went from here to here, that would be a one note away minor second. The inverse therefore is 12 minus one, which is an 11 note away, uh, 11 note away uh, major seven. So if I see this shape, normally I'd be going from E to A, F, which is obviously one note away minor second. The inverse, therefore, from F to E is an 11 note away, major 7. Let's bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it on back to the 6th. So we're going to go back to the 6th. And the 6th of the mode number 4, Lydian, is a 9 note away, major 6. How do I know that? Because the distance from D to F is 3 notes, 12 minus 3, is nine, nine note away, major six. So if I see this interval, I'm usually going from this way, D to F, which would be three note away, minor third. But if I go from F to D, therefore, that's a nine note away, major six. Let's bring it on back, then bring it on back to the fifth. So the fifth is gonna be right above it. That's gonna be a seven note away, perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because if I go from C to F, that would be a four note away, 
uh, 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 four node away perfect fourth, therefore 12 minus four is a seven node away perfect fifth. So if I went from top to bottom, that if I see that shape, top to bottom, seven note away, perfect fifth, therefore the inverse has got to be a five note away, uh, perfect fourth. Uh, wait a sec. If I go from top to bottom, sorry about that. Uh, that's a five note away, perfect fourth, therefore the inverse is a seven note away, perfect fifth. All right, hopefully I didn't confuse anybody too much. I've been anticipating the next one, which is the fourth, which is the funny one of mode number four, Lydian, because that's the one that has the, uh, the and it's named wrong, because it should be a uh, uh, augmented fourth, but you can also name that interval a flat fifth, but we need a fourth here, therefore it's gonna be an augmented fourth. So how do I know that? Because if I went from this B to that F, it would be five and then six, six notes away, which would be a flat fifth or augmented fourth. 12 minus six would also be six. So going the other way is also a six note away, flat fifth or augmented fourth. So when I see that shape, I'm like, oh, that's the tensiony shape. Now, hold on a second. I'm on the wrong, I'm totally, I've totally messed up the thing here. Wait a second, I'm supposed to be, going from no i did it right i'm i'm all i'm all getting tired so that's gonna be i think i did it right hopefully i didn't mess anything up flat six note away flat fifth or augmented fourth going either direction all right let's just get through it here you just got to get through it we're gonna go back to the third you're learning it wrong. You're learning it wrong. It's going to make it worse. No, it's not. I know it, it's I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing, Wyatt. This is going to be the third. So this so the third is going to be a four note away major third. How do I how do I know that? Cuz if I counted this way it'd be 5 6 7 8. That would be an eight note away <clears throat> minor 6. 12 minus 8 is four notes. Four note away major third. So if I see that shape usually from top to bottom eight note away minor six therefore from bottom to top four note away major third major third all right let's go back to the the second to the second and that's going to be then the second of mode four uh, lydian is a two note away major second how do i know that because if i counted this way it would be five ten ten note away which would be a minor seven therefore the inverse 12 minus 10 is a two note away major second. So if I see that shape, I'm like, oh, that's a 10 note away uh, minor seven inverse, therefore two note away major second. And that of course brings us back to the octave. All right, so that's good for that. Let's play with, I was gonna play with uh, the, see if I can go to my different chord patterns over here. I'm gonna hide and say, okay, now these are all the different three note combinations I can have. And now I'm just gonna imagine that we're starting, we're playing in Lydian, so I have to convert everything to Lydian. And these are all the combinations starting with, with a one, with the first, except excluding combinations of two at a time. And I'm gonna start with the first and then end with the first. I didn't end with the first here, I just have three, three notes. So let's just pick some of these. If I just did like a one, two, three of Lydian, now I gotta say, okay, the one of the Lydian, well, the one, a Lydian is a major mode, so I'm in F Lydian, so that would be a major F. The two of the Lydian, is that gonna be a major or is it a uh, minor? Well, if I don't know, I have to be like, oh, well, the two of the Lydian, let's do our math, the Lydian is, mo is, is mode number four, four minus one is three, plus the second is five. So it's actually the fifth of the related major, and I know the one, four, five of the related major are, are major chords. Beyond that, I know it's the mixolydian, if I know it's the fifth, which means it has, the, it has a distinctive minor seven to it. So that means I can say, okay, there's the F if I'm playing in Lydian to the G major, which I could add that distinctive minor seven. And then the three is gonna be 
the the three is going to be an A. I know it's an A, obviously, because I can count up on my fingers. So it's like F, G, A. It's going to be an A. Is it sharp or flat? Well, it's it's equivalent to the C major, so there's no sharps or flats in it. So it's just going to be an A. Uh, but then it's like, is it a minor chord or is it a major chord? Well, I know that if I if I don't know, then I can be like, well, I have the fourth Lydian minus one is three plus three is six. The sixth of the relative major. I know that the two, three, six make minor make minor chord. So it's going to be a minor chord beyond that. I know it's the main minor, the the minor mode, right? So I can say, okay, let's try that. That's going to be F. A minor. Now the Lydian I think is the hardest for me to sound like it's in Lydian because because I don't know what it is about Lydian it just seems like it's harder to get it to sound like the root is the Lydian right than other modes. So the fact that I'm I'm ending on this Aeolian might cause us might cause us to feel like it's in Aeolian right. So, but but so you can kind of play with it to try to make it sound like a like it's in the Lydian. Uh, you you could also say, what if I took the four the like the fifth of the Lydian is a C. So so if I took like that C, that could give you a leading tone. So if you're having trouble, maybe you go from C to there, and that makes it sound maybe more like you're going home. But let's do the chords we're in. So we got the one. Uh, which is Lydian, and then the two, G major, and then the three, A minor, back to the one, Lydian. One, two, three, one, one, two, three. That's okay. Let's say, what if I want, let's go, the C is the fifth. So let's try this one, this variation, because the fifth might make it sound like it's going to lead more in to the one, but it also might make it sound like it's in the key of C. So let's try this, same starting point. We got F. And then I can do to make it sound like it's pulling back home is to kind of cheat a little bit on that C and add a flat seven, which is outside of the key of Lydian, but it gives it a pull back home, makes it gives it a pull back to there. So I could try adding that. That's basically just putting my pinky down. So I could say, let's try it. One.
Let's try uh, the six. Let's try the next one just to test them out here. We'll say let's do this one. Du -du. So now you've got the one to the G, and now it's going to go to the seven. So what's the seven? I could say, well, the seven is four minus one plus seven is nine, but there's only seven modes. So nine minus seven is three. And I know that the third of the related major is going to be a minor. So I'd play a minor on it. So it'd be a minor E. Beyond that, it's a Phrygian, which I know has a distinctive minor second. I wanted to play with that. So in any case, so now we're going to say, now we have F. Wait, this isn't the seven. I'm on the six, which is Dorian. Dorian. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be a D minor. So let's try that. That's not the one. But no, that's right. One. try to put that seven in there this time because I, I was starting that last time so let's do that so now we're on one two, 
Now, again, that 7 has, I happen to know it's the Phrygian, so it's a minor, but I can also put that distinctive, it's still on the key to put that distinctive minor 2nd, which is right there, or up here. So I can kind of play with that. I can say, okay, well, if I know that, I could do something a little bit different than if you just knew it was a, a minor, right? I can be like, oh. there's my G, and I could add that distinctive 7. Taking me to the E, and I could add the distinctive second. Gives me a little more tension, a lot more tension. to go the other way like a a one seven two let's say like a a one seven two so it goes into like a lighter sound that we start in with a major but then it goes into that E minor where I can add that distinctive second and then it goes into a lighter 